my name is Kate Stoltz, and today I'm going to do my first YouTube Live. Um, I've never done this before, live like this, so if uh, my camera angle is a little off or whatever, just uh, let me know. <laughs> uh, anyway, today I'm going to show you guys how the Tweed Knot headband is made. Um, I just released them on my website, and I thought that people might want to know exactly how they're made. Um, so for those of you that are shopping the headbands and want to shop, uh, the link is in the description. I'm going to show you uh, the different colors and everything that I made, uh, so you'll be able to see them all together in person. Um, and then for those of you that are interested in learning how to make a headband, um, I'm going to be going over different sewing tricks and different tips of how you can make a headband look really nice, last longer. Um, there is a pattern in the description. There, There's a link there. There should be. Again, this is my first one, so bear with me if I make a mistake. I'll check after I'm done to make sure that everything's good. Um, but uh, it'll the link in the description for the pattern is going to lead you to my website. Um, the pattern is $2, but I spent a lot of time perfecting the pattern. Um, that's one thing that uh, whenever I create a new product, I have to spend a lot of time making sure that the pattern is really good. Because if, and, um, if you look at the headband this way, you want to make sure that there's enough fabric so that, that it's not pulling. Um, but you don't want too much fabric because then it gets a little bulky and the knot on the top of the head becomes a little bit too big. Um, and then the proportions, I think, are really important too um, because you don't want it too wide because then it overpowers the head because this is uh, this is a tweed knot headband. Um, the fabric is pretty thick. Uh, so you just want to make sure that you're not overpowering the head. Um, I also have on the website... I also have the classic flat headband. Um, that one's pretty straightforward. It's it's a classic one inch headband. Uh, it's made almost exactly the same, just a different pattern. Um, but if you want to make just a classic knot headband, just use just get the pattern in the link in the bio, and you can actually make this headband as well. Um, it's it's a little bit different, but. I'm not going to go into how to make these today, but you can use that pattern to make the classic headband as well. Anyway, um, so first of all, I'm going to go into, I'm going to show you guys the headbands that I have. Uh, for those of you that are making your own headbands, it might give you a little inspiration of, you know, the available kind of color options and, and it might serve as inspiration for yours. Uh, if you're shopping, um, it'll be a way for you to see the headbands. So I'm just working off my computer here. Um, Anyway, you can see them listed right here, or you can see them displayed right here. Um, and these are all made with, so the story behind these headbands is I have a customer that um, ordered a whole bunch of tweed skirts, and she went out, she got the fabric, and she purchased this beautiful couture tweed fabric from a mill in England. Um, and if you can see the details on the fabric, it's so beautiful. And I had a lot of scraps left over, like the edges of the fabric. Um, so I was like, I'm not, I don't like throwing uh, fabric away. I like to use up every little last bit. Uh, it's part of my belief in, you know, use everything because you know, resources on the earth are limited. So if I do have fabric left over, I, I like to try to make something nice with it. Um, so that's the story of these headbands is it's like the edges. I mean, a headband really doesn't use that much fabric. So you can easily make, you can easily make a headband out of scraps of fabric. But as you can see, uh, the tweed is on top of a silk charmeuse layer. Um, so it just creates this beautiful finished headband. Um, and one thing that I think is really important is, first of all, is quality. Uh, I think if whether you're buying a, um, anything or you're making anything, you want your investment, whether it's your time or your money, uh, to be worth it. Um, so you really want to make sure that, you know, it's a good quality. Um, so I'm just going to get into it. I'm going to, I'm going to make the headband from start to finish. Um, so 
This might become a little boring to those of you that are interested in actually making the headband, but as I go along, I'm going to give you some little tips, uh, little sewing tricks, little things that make the end result beautiful. Because I spent, again, I spent a lot of time perfecting the pattern, perfecting the technique, um, trying different ways of, uh, of closing the seam because there's a seam on the inside. And at first I was doing a grow grain on the inside to just finish the, the seam on the inside. Um, but it doesn't really, I'm not really that fond of it because the grow ring likes to slip around a little bit, even if it's done very neatly. Um, and you know, when I was creating the headband, I also, with every single product, it's important to go out and do research, look at what's already in the stores, look, look at all, what's already out there. Uh, first of all, to, you know, understand the price point, the quality that goes into that, uh, whether it's the quality of craftsmanship or the quality of the materials, it's really important to look at what's out there to, first of all, make sure that I am providing something that's nice and, uh, you know, comparable to what's out there. And second of all, to kind of understand what looks good and what doesn't. And, you know, I, with that research, I go into uh, high-end stores, you know, where the, the headbands are hundreds of dollars, five hundred dollars, whatever. Um, and then to also go into places where they're like, you know, twelve dollars or something, and to look at the different ways that they're made and what makes a twelve-dollar headband versus a five hundred-dollar headband. Um, so you know, all of that is to kind of get to a point where. I can be confident that the product that I'm making and selling and putting a lot of time into is uh, worth the end consumer's money. Um, and one thing that I noticed when I was looking at the cheaper headbands is the seam on the inside is finished with a grow grain that is glued down. And I was actually, I was in a drugstore and I noticed that the headband, you could actually like pick off the, the grow grain on the inside of the headband. You could actually pick it off. And I'm not the type of person to just go in and, you know, destroy products like in stores, but I, I went like this and the grow grain came off because it was just glued down. And, you know, if, if you're making a headband and you really, you're making it for yourself, you don't want to spend a lot of time. That's an option. Um, you know, I definitely don't recommend it, but because it's not going to last as long and I don't think it looks as nice either because if you glue it down, uh, it, it's, it just doesn't look, just doesn't look as finished. It just doesn't look as nice and it doesn't last as long. So I ended up, you know, spending a lot of time with that. And then I finally caved in and, and explored the idea of lining it with silk, silk shirt mousse which takes a bit longer, but I think it looks so much better. I'm gonna open it up for you inside. Um, this is the inside of the headband. Um, so you can see like everything's nicely finished. And then I finish it with my logo um, because I, I think a lot of people like a subtle hint of where the product is from, especially if they're spending a little bit of money on it. They, they like to, um, and these, you know, the headbands aren't expensive, but I think they're nice. Um, so I think they make a great gift because I put the headbands on a, I think a four year old. And since they're so pliable, they actually work on little kids, um, which, which I really like. And then if you're a little bit bigger, um, you can literally just go like this and, and kind of train the headband to match your head. Um, so, you know, you can just go like this and kind of match it. So that's, I think that makes headbands a really great gift uh, for, for people. Anyway, let's get started. This up here. Uh, so first of all, I'm gonna lean it down so you can see what I'm doing. I already laid out my fabric. Um, the first thing that you wanna do when you are working with any kind of fabric is to block out the fabric. Make sure that the, the grain is straight. Uh, you never wanna make, you never want to work with a fabric that is uh, a little wonky because then your um, your headband is going to be wonky. So you want to make sure that everything's everything's done like that. And then you also want to make sure that you pin 
the pattern uh, that you pin it on the edges. You really don't want to pin in the middle of the pattern because especially if you're working with silk, uh, tweed, you might not have such a big problem, but if you're working with silk, you never want to pin in the middle of the garment because you're gonna leave pin marks behind. So always pin your pattern on the edges in, seam, in the seam allowance if possible. So that's the first point. Um, another thing is you need to have a good scissor. If you don't have a good scissor, you're gonna have a lot of problems. Um, I think having a good scissor, you either want to invest, I recommend investing in a really good scissor if you're making these because it makes your life easier, you'll be able to work faster, and you'll be able to uh, just do a, better, do a better job of cutting it. Um, just cut this out. Pretty straightforward. See, that's the tweed base. And then here, this is the silk shrine mousse lining. So I cut it, and then I just cut it in half. I already cut it out. Uh, pretty straightforward. So once you have it cut out, you take out the pins. Um, and headbands are really easy to make. So they're, they're a lot of fun. I like to make that, I like to use uh, fabric that I already have in house um, for other things. See, very simple. Um, not a big production. And then over here, this is where I'm going to be sewing. All right. I set everything up to make it a little bit easier for you guys to watch um, so I don't have to move around as much. It's really important to overlock the edges because if you don't overlock the edges, your fabric's gonna come apart. Um, you can get away with it for some for some uh, fabrics, but if you're working with something like tweed, you can literally pull the fabric apart. You really have to overlock, or you're gonna have you know it's gonna start coming apart very quickly. Now that it's overlocked like that, I know we're going to the overlock machine. Just so you guys can see better. And here. All right, so now that that's done and it's overlocked, I'm going to start sewing it together. This is pretty easy to sew. You just have to make sure you have uh, the right side of the fabric facing up, which is sometimes a little hard to see, especially with tweed, because both sides are so beautiful. All right, that's the bottom. So then, uh, it's always a good idea to pin, to pin. I don't always pin the, I don't always pin the, pin the headbands because it's such a small piece. But if you're working with a plaid, and you want to make sure that the plaid matches, you really want to pin it together. Uh, it's, all, it's also a good idea so that it doesn't stretch. I know I, I've, I've worked with seamstresses and some of them are like, oh, you know, I'm so experienced, I don't need to pin. I, I don't think that's a very smart thing to do because no matter how, I, I've been sewing for almost 20 years now and I can tell you one thing, I still need to pin. So. Don't worry, it, it really doesn't take that long and the end result is so much better because your fabric is gonna pull, um, especially if you have a, 
if you have a plaid. Like this one is a plaid, so you have to make sure that the ends meet. Otherwise, it's not gonna look that great. Uh, it's one of the things that you can tell the difference between a high quality product and a cheap one is the stripes and the plaid, uh, if the stripes and the plaid work. That's, that's a huge um, thing to, to look out for is, do, does, it, does it actually match? Um, so I'm sure this. So, putting it together, I find the middle part is right here. It doesn't have to be exactly the middle, but you're gonna have to leave a little part on the center uh, to turn it inside out. Like this, this is a half inch seam allowance. So you just go in. Don't you love that noise? I love the noise of the sewing machine. Especially when it's working right. Because sometimes the sewing machine doesn't work right and then it's jamming up. Ugh. So just to have the sewing machine work nicely is just lovely. Okay. I'm working a little faster right now because I know that um, I, that I usually am very particular with the way that I finish uh, my seams and everything. So I'm, I'm, I kind of work a little slowly because I want everything to be done perfectly, but I'm going to speed it up a little bit for you guys. All right, so now I did this edge. Now I'm just going to flatten this out, flatten the seam, and then uh, let's see, let me bring it a little closer so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. All right, so here, you wanna flatten the seams so that there's not so much bulk, and then put your finger in, slide it in, and you wanna fold it over just like that. It doesn't have to be exact, but that's what's going to make it work on the headband and the bridge piece. Again, fold it over like this, and then kind of fold it in half like that. It's going to create a little pleat on the outside. And then you're just going to sew the top right there. I'm going to go back and forth a bunch of times because when you have such a small seam, if you just go once, it would open. So you really want to make sure that you have uh, when you're going back, when you have a little seam like that, you really want to make sure you, you go back and forth a couple times so that your seams don't open. Uh, again, did it on the other side. Those seams are the same. So you put it down and the edges. And boom, there's that. Okay, so then I have these little pieces of silk shore mousse. I use silk shore mousse for my lining. Um, you can definitely use other uh, kinds of silk. You can use like silk twill or um, I wouldn't go into like a lighter, like a silk chiffon, because it's going to tear the the headband, base headband. I'm going to show you guys the headband. Um, I use these plastic headbands, watch headbands. You can find them on um, Amazon. Pretty easy to find. Um, if there's a better option, let me know. I like these because, again, they're pliable. They're comfortable. I could wear this all day, and I wouldn't get a like a tension headache. Um, I think they're really comfortable. I think they work well. But uh, so what I'm talking about is you really don't want to use like a silk chiffon for the headband because it's just gonna break right through. The fabric isn't thick enough. I I like using the silk chiffon mousse because silk is pretty strong if you treat it correctly. Uh, if you don't wanna use a silk that's too thick because it's gonna bunch up on the inside. So I like silk chiffon mousse. Silk twill would also be a good, op good option too. Um, but I have used fabrics that are too thick and it just didn't look that great. So, uh, so for the silk trimmings lining, it's pretty straightforward. Each piece, um, you just want to sew it together. I'm assuming if you're watching this that you've learned that you know how to operate a sewing machine and know the basics. Uh, so I'm just gonna, just gonna go with that. And this one has a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna sew it. All right, boom, oh, boom. Oh. Okay. And do the same for both of those. Okay. I usually like to listen to music, or a podcast. Uh, I watch the Amber Heard 
that Johnny Depp trial I was sewing. That was really interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I have to watch something or I go crazy. I mean, not watching it, I have to listen to something. Okay. So now with this, I usually like to trim off the ends. This is the tweed top. So you really wanna always trim off your edges. If you have little edges on the side, uh, once you've cut it off, um, sorry, once you've sewn it down, if you have seam, edge, seam edges, you want to trim them, just the edges. Let me see if I can get it closer to you so you can see what I'm saying. This right here, that is unnecessary bulk. That's gonna make your, uh, it's gonna make it bulky and not look that great. So you wanna just cut it off. Um, don't cut the actual sewing stitch, but cut off the unnecessary bulk whenever you can. It makes a huge difference, huge difference in the end, in the end result. Okay, so now you have this little section in the, in the center. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact, just enough to turn it inside out. So then, turn it inside out. If you need to, you can stick like you can stick something in to make sure that it's turned out properly. Um, this tweed you don't really need to because it it comes out on its own. You just want to turn it inside out like that. Just pull it. Uh, one thing that you want to get if you're making headbands is you need to have a loop turner. This. Most handy tool you can ever have for sewing, and you need to have one. They're not expensive, but they will save you so much time. And I, I actually have like three or four because I use them so much um, for spaghetti straps, turning things inside out, all of that. Okay, so now I have it right side out, and you have this little opening here. So you want to, you just want to close that. It's going to be on the inside. You're not going to see it, so you can easily just. Fold it down like this, and then sew as close to the edge as you can while still getting a good stitch. All right, that's done. And now, I'm just doing this as I go. I hope it's not too confusing. So now I have these, um, these lining pieces. So you're gonna see this, the middle edge, you're gonna to wanna to close the small edge. You're gonna to wanna to close the end. So you really just wanna make sure that the seam is in the middle. The seam is in the middle and you wanna close that up. And then you're gonna stitch closed. All right, and then do it with the other piece as well. You have two pieces, two sides, and you'll see how it works out. Everything, you always want to make your seams as hidden as possible. I literally spend, you know, I, I'm making a new design, creating a new garment, a new design, whatever, and I'm working during the day, and then I'm taking my shower, and I stand up there in the shower, and I think of how I'm going to cover a seam, how I'm going to hide it, how I'm going to make it look good, how I'm going to finish it. Um, if you know, you know, you know, when you, when you're creating a garment, um, and you're spending a lot of time making it look good, you know, I, I do French jeans, I line my garments, um, and when, I, the more complicated the garments become, like the more complicated the design becomes, the more complicated it is to cover the seams, and, uh, so you, yeah, spend a lot of time thinking about closing seams and the insides of garments, because that's, I think that's just as important as, as the outside of the garment, if you're investing in the clothes. If you're just, you know, it's just like a t-shirt or a pair of jeans or whatever to, you know, that you want to wear for every day, that's a bit of a different story. Um, but if you're investing in clothes, if you're investing in, um, whether it's you are investing your money in something that somebody else had uh, made for you, or you are making your own clothes, you really want to make sure that you know, the time and the money is well spent. So if you're, 
if you're spending money on a high quality garment, you want to uh, you want to make sure it's worth it. So this is the silk shirtless lining, and you want to go in. This is where the loop turner comes in handy uh, because it would be very hard to do this without a loop turner. So you want to do is you just want to take your loop turner, insert it into the center, and grab a little bit of piece of fabric. Little piece of fabric, see? Loop turn is all the way up here. There's a little hook on the inside. You want to grab the inside uh, on the seam, because again, you don't want to poke the silk where it's going to show. And then you have to like weasel it out. Weasel, weasel, weasel. You just have to wiggle it out and slowly and patiently pull it, pull it towards, pull it towards the edge. Sometimes it's easy. The last one was easy. This one's giving me a little bit of trouble. But you just gotta keep. Gotta keep trying. Eh, this one doesn't want to do it. So do, do, do. Hmm. Sometimes the things that you think are gonna be so quick end up taking forever because it's like um, that's why it's hard to determine how long something's gonna take, is because sometimes it just it just works, and sometimes it gives you trouble like this. <laughs> I remember when I was going to FIT, my, my teachers would often talk about how when they were working alone, everything was so easy and, and just flowed, like when they were making patterns or whatever, the pencil never broke. But whenever they were teaching the class, the pencil would just break. <laughs> because they're just like, you know, when you know people are watching, there's like a little bit of added pressure, just enough, just enough to make you, come on. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, that was a difficult one. It's usually a little quicker than that. So, the right side out, seam is on the inside, beautiful. Beautiful. And I don't, uh, I don't overlap the silk because of the way that it's finished. There's not a lot of tension on the on the inner seam, so I don't worry about it. Uh, silk does fray, so depending on like the way that you're making your garment, you should overlock it, but I don't do it for this because it's such a thin silk, the overlock needles are a little thicker, so I'm, I'm more worried about damaging the silk than I'm about it fraying. Um, so that's something that you have to think about. Everything depends on the application. And the more you sew, the longer you, you work at it, the more you'll learn these little tricks. Um, so now that you have your silk shard mousse lining, you're gonna put it on the headband. And you're just gonna slide it on, just like that. Yeah. All right, there it goes. All right, so you just wanna pull it all the way up. See how it goes further than the center? That's because we're going to Put the other one over it and then and then sew it down. All right, so that's how the base is put on. It takes a long time to make a headband. People are like, oh, why are your headbands so expensive? Why are your headbands so expensive? It's because they take a bit of time. It's not because there's a lot of fabric. There really is not a lot of fabric. It's because there's a lot of work. Um, I mean, I could easily just glue, again glue them down, and if that's what you want to do when you're making a headband. That's fine, but again, I, I've gone into a couple places now where I was looking at their headbands and I could just literally pull them apart um, because they were glued. I don't think, I'm not sure why the glue doesn't really work as well. Maybe glue just doesn't work as well in general, but for the headbands, I just, I don't think it's a good idea to use glue. Uh, first of all, it's stinky and doesn't look that great. Whew. Anyway, so you okay. So anyway, while I'm working, I always I always like to listen to um, again podcasts or music or whatever because days become long and you really want to entertain yourself. And there's so much interesting content out there to listen to and to. Um, I don't really like watching stuff because that's a distraction, but you know, something like a trial or, uh, something where you don't really have to watch every single second that can be really interesting. Um, so 
definitely recommend uh, listening to podcasts and stuff like that because there's a lot of uh, if if you're working in fashion design, your um, business fashion podcast is really good. Um, they discuss they discuss uh, how the fashion industry works, and they always have great speakers come in and talk about. Um, you know, just like how the company was doing, how they managed to increase sales or whatever. Like with the pandemic, they were talking about the supply chain and and how we're going, going to combat those issues. Um, so, if you really want to continue, I think especially with fashion design, you really uh, a continued education is really important because things are always changing. Um, the landscape. The, the landscape is always changing. Um, there's always new players in the market. There's always so much interesting, um, so many interesting things to, to discover. And uh, yeah, definitely worth listening to. All right, so here I have the silk charmeuse lining all ready to go. And now we're going to get started on hand sewing. Um, before we sew this on, I'm just gonna I'm gonna tie this into a knot. See. Um, make sure that my edges are down and then I just do a simple knot like this. Make sure that your, uh, your seams are both facing down in the same way when you have your knot finished. You wanna make sure that your knot is really nice. Um, you wanna make sure that the knot, the seam on the inside is in the very center of the headband. So you're just gonna pull it out like that. If you can see, um, the seam is like that. And then I actually pin it down. I found that if I pin it down, if I pin the seam down on the, in the center, it end up, ends up so much nicer. Um, so you really just want to pin it down on the inside, make sure that it's in the center. And that will make your headband look so much nicer. All right, so I'm just gonna pin that down and not gonna go all the way out to the knot, but just see, I put three pins in. Again, this is something that you wanna think about when you're making a silk headband. You might not wanna do that because uh, when you pin silk, you tend to leave little snags or little pin marks behind. So you really have to be careful about pinning the center. You really have to be careful about pinning um, fabric like that. So, all right, so I'm gonna do it on the other side as well. So just bada bing, bada boom. This world wide is a step in the room. Okay, so I have that pinned down. I have my knot. I'm gonna perfect my knot, make sure that the seam is facing down, make sure everything looks nice. See that? All right, so now, um, when you're making your silk charmeuse lining, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to continue perfecting it as you make it. So if it's a little bit loose, that's fine. Don't worry about it too much. Um, you just want to make sure that, that it's on, that it looks good. And this, you don't have to worry about it being exactly in the center because the knot is wide enough to make that not a worry. Okay, so now this is where the hand sewing starts. I'm going to grab some thread and... All right, so now thread. Thread, whoop, see? <laughs> All right, so thread can be a little tricky because it does like to ravel and play all kinds of tricks. So that's that. So you get your needle, get a good piece of thread, and I'm not gonna make it too long because I'm gonna be struggling with knots if I do that. But I wanna make it long enough so I'm constantly changing the thread. So now that you have your thread on, uh, something that happens when you're working with thread is it likes to tangle up. And the way you can help prevent that is slide your finger through the center and straighten it out. Let, so you're working with a double strand. Um, so, and now you just wanna pull your fingers down, pull your fingers down, do that a couple times. It doesn't take long, you'll, you'll get used to it. And then you wanna go like this to make sure that the thread is, uh, make sure that you have your, see, here's my needle, this with the thread, so you're not pulling at the edge of the thread here, you don't want that to break, um, but you just hold it like that, go like this, go to the other edge, and just a couple little threads, not, not hard enough so that it breaks, but hard enough to uh, erase some of the kinks. And um, the reason why I wanna do that is because if you don't do that, 
it likes to, it really creates a mess sometimes. So again, now that I've done that to the thread, I pull it out and uh, again, I'm spending a little bit more time than I usually would because I wanna show you guys what I'm talking about, but that's it. And now you go to, again, I'm working really fast here <laughs> so that you guys uh, don't have to waste so much time. I usually spend a little bit more time uh, perfecting the details when I'm making them for, to sell. Uh, I like this tool. It's actually the screwdriver for the sewing machine, but I use it for the headbands. I poke in the center right here just to flatten that extra kind of fabric there and make it look nice. Okay, so now that it's nice and flat, I'm just gonna go in with my needle and I'm gonna sew the center seam shut. That's gonna be covered with the, uh, it's gonna be covered with the knot, so you really don't have to worry about it being too perfect. Um, you still wanna do a good job, because even if it's not, even if you don't see it from the outside, it's covered with lining or whatever, you still wanna make sure that all your seams are done nicely. First of all, it lasts longer. And second of all, if you're selling the garment or you're making garment for a friend, um, you wanna make sure that even if they open the garment or something happens, um, it doesn't look like a mess on the inside. So you still wanna make sure you do a nice job. So here I'm just gonna do, yeah, you can't really see the hands here. Okay, so I'm gonna come a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so you just wanna sew it together. Just a, just a classic like stitch will work. It doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You wanna make it look good and you wanna do it nicely. You wanna do a nice job, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Cause again, this is gonna be on the inside. So you really just wanna, um, you really just wanna connect these two, make sure it doesn't come apart. Oop, that's what the thread likes to do. It likes to play games. Okay. <laughs> I feel like such an old person at this point because I was thinking about it this morning. I was like, I wonder if I'm going to make these videos, who's going to watch them? Like, who's going to watch them? And I was like, oh, probably people that are so much younger than me. And it just made me realize that mm, I'm getting older, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> so, all right. So, uh, the thread is act acting really nicely so far. And uh, the reason why it's not, if you don't pull it out and you don't straighten the kinks out before you start your thread, it, uh, it plays games. It plays so many games with you. So you wanna get ahead of that and you just wanna, you just wanna make sure that you prepare your thread before you start sewing. Otherwise, you're gonna have it doubling over in knots, going all crazy, and it's gonna become a mess. All right, so make sure you knot your, as you're hand sewing, make sure you knot every now and then, double knot. Because if you don't, and something happens, the garment's getting worn, something comes apart, and pff, the whole thing comes apart. So you wanna make sure that when you're sewing, when you're hand sewing, that you knot, every, that you knot the thread every now and then, so it doesn't come apart. All right, so now that I have the, the silk base done, I'm just gonna slide this through, and you know what, before then, before that, it's important to pull it out because you really want the whole inside to look beautiful. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna go like this and run your fingers on the inside. Make sure that there's no extra fabric. You see how there's like a little bit of extra fabric here? That's okay. Not a big deal, not a big deal. You're gonna pull that out until it's nice and smooth, no wrinkles. You can pull it out and you're just gonna fold it over, just like that. And put a little pin in it. I know it's hard to see because my fingers are all over it. But see, I'm just gonna pin that down. And then when I'm hand sewing, I'm gonna correct it and I'm gonna make sure that it looks nice. I do that with the other side. This side, meh, this side's actually fine. It doesn't need that. Um, so now that I have it all smoothed out, um, make sure it's nice and tight. If it's not tight, 
it's going to look wrinkly and bunchy. So you want to make sure that it's tight, not too tight, because then you're going to have issues, but you want it to, you want it to look good. All right. So now I'm just going to pull this out just to straighten it one more time. And then here, now I'm ready to insert the lining into the headband. So this is the bottom part. See, this is the seam right here. I just slide it in, boom, 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 like that. And now I'm gonna start pinning this onto the base. Again, when you're working with silk, this becomes a lot more complicated because you don't wanna mess up your fabric. So that's why, honestly, that's a big reason why silk headbands are so expensive is because you really have to be careful. First of all, silk prices have doubled in the last, um, I would say the last five years, they have doubled, literally doubled. Uh, silk trimmings used to be eleven fifty a yard, and now it's like twenty two fifty a yard, which is that's a big price jump. Just saying, um, but that's why silk headbands are so expensive, is because when you're working with silk. You really have to worry about not damaging the fabric because, you know, even when you're working with like a silk charmeuse lining like this on the inside of the headband, you have to work with sharp needles, thin silk needles. If, you, if your needle is too thick or if it's dull, it's going to uh, create little runs in the fabric and you're going to damage your silk. So the first step to working with silk is making sure that you have a good uh, needle. All right, so I pinned the edges. You can see this comes out a little bit more than this because you don't want the edge to be poking out. You want it to look nice, right? It's always about looking nice. So you have to think about uh, the end result. Always think of the end result. Um, and then here, just make sure that it's on the edge and then you pin it down. All right, so then you wanna make sure that this is on the center. So I pull it down, make it look nice, okay? And then some of these pins that I already used to pin the tweed flat, I'm gonna use and I'm gonna just fasten the tweed to the headband so that it doesn't move around when I'm sewing it, because if it moves around, especially if you see this kind of has a stripe pattern, if I would have cut the fabric before blocking it, before making sure that the stripes were lying perfectly level, um, it wouldn't look that nice. The reason why it looks so complete and so nice is because I took the time to block the fabric. And then while you're working with it, while you're pinning it down, you wanna make sure to keep the center seam in the center. Um, and then while you're pinning, you also wanna make sure that you're pinning the seam right here. The center of your tweed seam should be in the center of the silk charmeuse seam so that when you hand sew it, boom, you can't see the seam. So I try very hard to cover up every single seam because it does make a huge difference in the way that the garment looks. All right, so I'm just going to finish pinning the tweed onto the silk charmeuse and I'm going to look at the knot and make sure that that looks nice too. So just spend a little bit of time and I like to, you know, make sure that where it's coming out of the, the knot, that it, it's kind of folded in just to give a beautiful knot appearance. And then here, you wanna make sure that it's nice and flat. Again, it's a good idea to pin it right there. And you're gonna hand sew it so everything's gonna stay sticking. And now you also wanna make sure that the, the knot is in the center. And I'm gonna show you guys a little trick. So with the cutting board, you have your grid marks here. If you take your headband and lay it down, all right, you lay it down like that, and you wanna make sure to use the grid marks to kind of center this. So see how I'm using this as my center. This is on the same distance apart. This is the same distance apart. I'm using these grid marks 
to, I'm using the grid marks to make sure that the knot is nicely centered. So, I like the grid marks because I've done a couple headbands where I didn't do that, and afterwards I noticed that it was a little off center, and the pictures, it showed up on the website, so I had to remake, remake the piece. So definitely always a good idea to check to make sure things are centered, um, because if you can get it right on the first time, that's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of money, because once you sew it wrong, you got to take it apart. It takes a long time to take a garment apart. It takes a long time to fix mistakes. So spend a little bit of extra time to get it right on the first time, and you're gonna spend, you're gonna save time. Um, trust me on that. Okay, so I still have my thread from sewing it together, but now I'm ready to sew the silk show mousse to the tweed. And this is where I like to listen to stories because it is literally like sitting in a chair and knitting. Um, because that's all it is. All right, so. Again, when you're hand sewing, make sure to not, in, when you start sewing, um, even though you have knotted it in the beginning, when you're starting to sew a little bit uh, elsewhere, you wanna make sure you're knotting it. So I'm gonna start here, right here. I'm gonna make sure to grab a little bit of the knot so that that doesn't move around. And I'm gonna move, I'm gonna sew on the outside all the way around and that's it um, so I mean that's pretty much it so let me move closer so I grab make sure you guys can see and then I grab a little bit of the silk shirt mousse if you can see my my needle going into the silk shirt mousse grabbing that I pull it out and then I go back into I go back into the tweed grab the fabric and that is how, that's how you fasten the tweed to the silk shirt mousse. And that's how it doesn't, um, that's to make sure that the fabric doesn't slip around. While you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you're only grabbing the fabric on the bottom and not the top. Because if you look, this fabric is folded over and you have two layers of fabric here. You only wanna grab one layer of fabric. So you want to pay attention to that because if you grab both layers of that, it's a little, it's a little tricky sometimes. But if you grab both layers, um, grab both layers, it's it's not going to stand as nicely. It's going to look a little flat. So I mean, it's still going to work, but it's not going to be the end result that you really want. Um, so anyway, that's that does it. And then once I'm done with that, I sew the label on. I have. Uh, like a Kate Stoltz label. It's really small. It's like an inch and a fourth long. It's really thin and it's in gunmetal. Um, it just has Kate Stoltz on it. I like to add it just right here. So it's not like glaring in your face logo, but it's still there. Cause even when I'm like walking around in, when I'm walking around in the grocery store or when I go shopping or something and I see somebody wearing an accessory, like I had that experience where I saw somebody wearing this beautiful hair bow and I was like, where's that hair bow from? And I didn't want to be creepy, but I was, I was like, I didn't want to talk to her and ask her where she got it from. But I was like trying to find like a tiny little logo or something that would tell me that she was like in front of me and at the, at the mall, um, at like a makeup calendar. And I was like, looking for a logo and there was nothing there. And I was like, I just went with a little tiny bit of a logo just so that I know where it's from. And cause it was a beautiful hair bow. It was like on the back of her head and she looks so chic. And I was like, where's it from? So, you know, I, I like to add that. Cause I think, I think people like to, you know, if, again, if you're spending money on something, I think people like to um, have a subtle way of telling people where it's from. Um, I'm not like a logo mania kind of girl, you know, that walks around with logos all over myself, but I do like a little bit of something that tells you what the brand is from, you know, like as like a, a little signature piece, whether it's like a signature, um, you know, like Tom Brown has 
has these like red, white, and uh, red, white, and blue stripes um, that they're finding over with Adidas. But anyway, forget about that. Uh, they have like red, white, blue stripes on their clothes and they add it in like really little places and, and it's just so beautiful. And you know right away that that's a Tom Brown piece because it has that red, white, and blue stripe on it. So I think people like to see a little bit of a logo or a little bit of a signature as something to show where they got it from. Because, you know, part of fashion is, is being social and like showing people like who you are, what your style is, where you buy your clothes from, all of that stuff. So yeah. All right. Well, the rest of this is just hand sewing. So I'm going to end this. Uh, I plan to do this a little bit more often. Um, life gets busy. So, <laughs> and I'm going to be honest, I, you know, I do everything from the beginning to the end. I, you know, I design the products. I do work in product development. I make all the patterns. I make all the samples. Uh, orders come in. I make the order. I package it. I send it out. So I'm, you know, I sometimes work with factories. I sometimes work with seamstresses and, and everything like that when I get too busy to handle it on my own. But I'm going to be honest, I do most of the stuff myself at this point, um, including managing my camera and my audio and everything, which I hope you guys can hear me. Um, I'm going to have to check. I don't like watching myself, so. Ugh. I hate watching myself. <laughs> so I'm going to have to check to make sure that the sound works. Um, but yeah, so I do most of the stuff myself, so it's hard to be like, oh, I'm going to do this every single week and then follow through, but I'm going to do my best. So, and if there's anything that you are interested in having me talk about or having me make that, you, you know, something that's already on my website and you're like, how's that made? How do you, you know, how do you do that? Uh, just let me know. Um, I see a couple people in the chat. I see Michael Sullivan. Uh, he is always, always so cheerful and positive. I love it. And then there's Steve Calderon. I recognize him from Instagram. And then there's Wire Hyperspice. Hi, Kate. Your boy video, nice to see. And video looks good. Oh, thank you. Um, I don't know. I've been watching, I've been watching YouTube videos, like kind of listening, watching. And I find this space really interesting because you can really connect with people and, and learn a lot. You can learn uh, pretty much anything on YouTube, like the tutorials, you can connect with people, you can watch them, you know, while they're talking and stuff like that. So I love it. So, you know, I'm planning on doing this a little bit more often. So make sure to hit the subscribe button. Uh, so, you know, I'm not that consistent with the way that I post so that when I do post, you get a notification. Um, you can press the bell. I'm not going to post so many videos that you're going to be annoyed and like oh, fifth video of the day it's going to be more like one video a week or whatever sometimes more sometimes less um and if you ever get annoyed with the alerts you can always turn it off it's very easy but um make sure to hit the like button because i know that that makes a difference in how youtube kind of uh, does the algorithm and stuff like that so anyway that's it for today. So thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for joining me. And I hope this was enjoyable and fun for you. So bye. Ah, how do I end it? <laughs> All right.